Hey everybody, it's Commander Cloud, and we are back with the solo lane tier list. It's been uh, quite some time since I've revisited this. <laughs> As you can see at the top, 7.3. Oops. Anyway, we're back to update this thing. Uh, a lot of things have happened obviously since the uh last time we looked at this old tier list here uh we got a lot to talk about with who's already in the list here so starting with top line king arthur probably not the best soul laner anymore definitely not at this point is he out of s plus yeah I, I don't know that for sure. He's still a pretty dominant character. So I think I'll put him at the end and just have him hang out, you know. Do whatever. Uh, Camazots we're not seeing, so he can go down here for now. We'll revisit that later. Osiris lately has been... Uh, I felt underperforming a little bit. From what I've, I've uh, been experiencing... Uh, top level play might dictate that differently, but I don't think we're seeing it much there either. So, he can hang down here with Hercules. Uh, Tier still pretty good. Yorm, I think he still gets pressure, but not as good. Drop him back a little bit. Achilles is still really annoying. Sobek's annoying. Uh, we're probably not seeing that level of play of it with him right now, though. Cthulhu, obviously, is pretty good in the role big bully over here maxing the one is appears to be the way to go it's what the pros are doing seems to work pretty well for pressure so really liking cthulhu right now as a big nasty bully um i think Honestly, from what I've been seeing, I think Hercules is making a comeback. He's still just a really annoying early game bully. In that he doesn't always have to hit the wave to be a threat to you. His driving strike does a lot of damage. His passive is really annoying. Frustrating. His three gives him prots. And it has for a while, but, you know, that's pretty nasty. I've seen a lot more from him. That's why he's getting the bump there. Let's see. In terms of what's getting played right now, Guan Yu is pretty uh, not good. There's too many gods that frustrate him and stop his three and just lots of annoying things that's hard for him to deal with. Uh, Mulan's going to go about in the middle here, I think. She's shown, shown a lot more promise than I was seeing before. So she's going to get that bump into top line. S plus there. Honestly, she might be up here. That's a pretty bold take, I think, though. But I've seen some good stuff from Mulan, so... Keep it up there. Uh, Odin, I am dropping down here because we're not seeing it played. Pretty simple. These guys have dropped completely out of solo lane meta. The things I was liking are not happening, so they're just off of the list. Going back to just being really good junglers. Not seeing the play or the pick rate from those gods in solo to warrant anything I had predicted previously about them. Persephone still hangs out because she's just that good. Same with Haim. Kind of just that good. In my opinion. Of picks here. Hierarchy. Cerberus is probably not as good as Hades. Susano, same thing. We're not seeing the Susano solo anymore, so he's out. 
Bologna's in a weird spot, I think, right now. I don't really like her that much. There's some usefulness in that her kit is pretty versatile with boxing. Certain different gods and things like that. Uh, we got, of course, RDO down here after those buffs. Pretty uh, significant things. Slightly better to me. Still not better than these gods because Cerberus is just going to take a lot of healing, you know, from her because of his passive. Tough to deal with. Osiris is just kind of a counter to her, I think. Hades is Hades. It's not really much to say there. Um, Vamana has uh, improved significantly, in my opinion. Still has the early game lane struggles that he's always had before, but his late game is incredibly frustrating. Once he gets Katana, if he rotates to mid, it's like, it's bad for you. If he does that, he will probably kill you if you're a mid mage and he rotates on you. It's not a whole lot you can do about that. Because of his ability to just be incredibly annoying, there's nothing you can do about him if he rotates and just ults somebody. It's just, there you go. And then he's a big damage soak for the team. You can ult in front of an objective. Makes it a lot easier secure. Stuff like that. Very foreboding god, uh, as it is right now. I think that's why he's strong. Um, Tonga can stick around. Not that I've seen necessarily the level of play to warrant her being that good, but this is like in the bottom of good solo options, so she can hang out down there, and I'm fine with it. Uh, Loki can be down here because I hate him still. Don't care. Uh, Erlang has uh, much improved, in my opinion, as of late. I mean, the few times I've been trying him has been working. He's fallen out of the meta, but when I've played him, it's worked pretty much every time. So, big boost for him. I think his uh, level of effectiveness has certainly improved. That amount of time. I mean, look, we're talking six patches here, so like you would think some big jumps would happen. And of course, this tier is like okay, this god can't say her name on YouTube though. Not seeing the play or the pick rate. Put her down, put her out. No more tier list for you. And then these gods are like maybes you know these are like you could pick these gods here but it's probably not where you want to pick them they can play the role but it's like eh, maybe don't you know situationally they can work not that we've seen uh nausea or thanatos solo you know as a matter of fact thanatos can just go away i don't think <laughs> that hasn't happened in a long time so let's just pretend that's not real and put him out. Okay, let's talk about some uh, niche stuff here. Set solo, I am liking that a little bit. Not much though. Most of the time I do not like this because his ult is not uh, the most effective thing in the short lane, of course. Solo lane's pretty short. You can get to your tower quick, and then he can't really dive you. It's hard for him to do that, unless you're super low. If you play around him the proper way, if you have a god with good CC that can control his movement and his ability to be aggressive, then he's not that big of a threat. But there are times that can work. Uh, Nemesis, been seeing this a little bit in the right matchup, I'd say highly effective. Her pressure on the wave with Golden Blade is pretty nuts. 
Now, most of the time, I think at high level play, you're not really going to see that, uh, see her doing big things in the solo lane. This is more of a lower elo uh, cheese strat thing. Just a lot of players can't handle uh, her ability to get pressure and still be a single target threat to you because she can auto you and clear the wave at the same time if you fight aggressively because Golden Blade, she's going to have Golden Blade. And it can be tough to deal with the mobility. Up Apart from that, though, most high-level players are going to be able to handle her fine. But it is certainly a, a highly viable option in most ranked matches. I don't think anyone else has gotten a significant boost or anything that would warrant them being playable to an extent in the solo lane. Because none of these other gods I'm seeing picked in solo lane except in stupid casual matches, so <laughs> we ignore that, of course. Uh, bottom tier hunter options, if you want them, I would normally just not have these here at all, because hunters don't belong in the solo lane, and you can fight me on that, but that's honestly just how I feel about them. So we have these options because they're generally the most viable in solo because they have something in their kit that works for that particular role and mindset. Cupid has a lot of sustain. Neath has sustain in her kit and some crowd control. Hachiman's got some crowd control. He's got mana sustain. It's a big deal. And then on her is just on her. He's one of the best control hunters in the game. So he stays down there. Your boy Sukuyomi down here will remain off of the list because not available and ranked. That's how it works. The god's not a ranked. God doesn't get placed. So, yeah, pretty simple. I think the most major changes were uh, top line solo laners. Mulan and Cthulhu obviously popping up is really good. And then Yorm and King Arthur getting some getting nerfed and pushed back down. Hercules also, I think, making a comeback in his solo lane usefulness. Although we will see in the long term what happens with that. He may just fall back out a favor again. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for updating the solo lane tier list. I'm sorry, it's been such a long time since we've even looked at it six patches <laughs> anyway hope you guys enjoyed that like and subscribe if you did as always keep in mind these are recommendations for uh, what you should be picking in the solo lane does not mean that these guys are actually uh work out in the order that they're placed doesn't mean cthulhu is going to be the best solo laner every time doesn't mean you have to pick any of these gods over others. It's just opinion based. Anyway, with that, check the helpful links down in the description, including the link to the tier list. And with that, I will see you guys next time for some more Smite. Have a good one.